It's New Beer Thursday. Woo! And uh, today we are doing Porta Epic. Porta Murillo. Porta epic. Murillo. Porta Murillo. And we're not just saying epic because Steve likes to say epic all the time. Epic. And yeah, we're doing another epic beer. Um, I think it was, I don't know, a few weeks ago, a month ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. We did uh, Armageddon IPA from Epic. We get them specially muled in from our buddy Dave, and so we have to do them when we get them. So, yeah. Because it's fresh and delicious. Well, more so we're doing it because the episode of Brewmasters um, on Discovery Channel aired tonight where they um, actually brewed this beer. Actually, on the show, they brewed Two a, a pilot batch. Yeah, a pilot for, batch and then a production yeah, batch. I think it was for Beer Vana. In, yeah. And uh, was it Australia or New Zealand? New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Auckland, New Zealand. Okay. So uh, this is the second batch um, that they made in New Zealand. The first pilot batch they made in Rayabuth at yep. Dogfish Head. And then the second one they made at Epic. So we have received it. Well, I think this is the first few bottles that have left New Zealand. I so, believe you're right. In fact, we even have the case that's supposed to go to Dogfish Head sitting in the garage going to be shipped out tomorrow. So It's pretty cool. Yeah. Sorry, Sam. I'm drinking it for you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm sure he understands. Anyway, um, but yeah, this is a fantastic beer. It's a, they call it an Imperial Sorta Porter. Yeah. Um, it's not quite a porter and it's a little bit hoppier than you would expect for a porter. Um, but it's smoky, and you're gonna get some fruit off the tamarillos. Yeah, it's made with tamarillos. Tamarillos, tamarillos, are like uh, New Zealand tomatoes. I think tree tomatoes. Was it you that said? I forgot who it was that said. Maybe it was you. It looked like a kiwi tomato. Yeah, it was the name. They, they look to me like they're a cross between a kiwi and a tomato, just right. because like the the dark seeds in the inside and the really tight structure of it. It yeah. looks. By the way, Aaron's on the show this week. In case oh, you yeah. haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're right. like, whatever, we've got epic beer here. Who cares what this guy is? We're not going to talk. I'm just waiting to drink it. We're not going <laughs> to talk bad about Brad because he's actually out of town. He's visiting his family for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, so we can't hate on that. Yeah. Next time we'll talk bad about Brad. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. It's uh, smoked over Pahutakawa. Oh, see, you did that really that. well. See, I was going to be like, you should just let John talk from now on. <laughs> it's smoked over that kind of wood. Pahutakawa oh. wood. And it's fermented a with uh, rock. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't just in the middle of a thought. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then I hear something about wood. Wood. Yeah. No. Go ahead. <laughs> let's not. Let's not diverge this time. It's made with Brazilian sugar. What's the name of the Brazilian sugar, Steve? Rapadura. Ooh, look at yeah. you. Only because they used to know a Brazilian street fighter by that name. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna pop these in the grand style that they should be. Don't break it. Seriously, what's happening here? There you go. All right. I thought maybe these were the twist-off ones from Pumpkin. <laughs> That's a little bit too aggressive for that kind of pour. That's all you get, just well, so you know. Just from the looks of the head, it looks like it'll uh, kind of simmer away pretty quick. Well, still your glass. Hmm. I can smell it from here. John will be all greedy, so we'll just put this below. What do we got? All this left. So, yeah, very dark. A lot darker than you would probably expect. Um, it's very dark. Now we're serving this um, just a slightly above room or cellar temperature, so it's probably a little bit warmer than normal. But I think it really is bring it brings out the tartness of the tamarillos. Actually, I think it's good at this temperature. Mm -hmm. I had a couple in the fridge, but. That's okay. All right. <laughs> I like it at this temperature, actually, because it's it's very delicious. Yeah, it's it's actually very good at this temperature, i got to say. It smells very uh, sweet, kind of a little bit of smoke going on. It's a little bit, a good amount of sugar in it, though. Like, when you're saying it's sweet, you get a lot of sugar off it, and then uh, definitely you can smell smoke on it. But Yeah, definitely a lot of smoke in the aroma. You get a nice sweetness on the, on the sides of the palate. And then it just the hop the the nice hoppiness of it, which I think the tamarillos obviously kind of bring up a little bit, right. um, pops you on the back end, and it's, it's nice. I wish I knew exactly what the tamarillo tasted like. Yeah, I know. I kind of want to get a tamarillo now. So tonight we're going to be pairing this with. Um, I went on a limb because you know I had only had the beer once, but um, I got a nice Havarti cheese, um, and then a double cream brie, 
and a aged Gruyere, uh, along with some prosciutto, mm -hmm. and some beef tenderloin wrapped in uncured bacon with some steak seasoning. Right on. I think it's a good mixture. Yeah, it's uh. just sort of like one of these things will pair nicely with it. <laughs> We'll um, see which actually, one it is. I'm starting for some with the reason, meat. The prosciutto looks like it'll go really well, but I'm going to start with... Mm. Oh my god, those are so good. Mm. What was that cheese again? It's a Havarde. I don't think I've ever had a Havarde. For all of you that hate when I talk while I'm masticating, I just covered my mouth. See, I'm doing it again. That actually goes You're pretty welcome. well. Try yeah. it with that. Ah. And this one was, what was this one again? That's a double cream brie. Definitely bitters it out with that one, I think. Oh my God. This dude. enhances the sweetness. Dude, oh my God. I have to get on that. This brings a whole bunch of maltiness out of it. Makes it a little bit more sweet and you get that nice little tomato-y-esque flavor. Jinx. Kind of at the end. You can't oh, more. that's good. I said jinx. I don't know what that means. Mm, never mind. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna try that then because you sold it. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Bounce into this Havarte. Mm. I could see how something with a little pepper spice could go with this too. Kind of goes along with the brings the smokiness, the roastiness, too, yeah. and the smokiness. You know. You're right. Oh, yeah, the, the Havarte works really good too. Right off the bat, I see what you're saying about the malt. I was inhaling the beer and I got malt up. <laughs> yeah, I mean? that's crazy. I keep going back to the smell it. on this. I like the smell. The the aroma on it's really nice. It's cleansing. Mm-hmm. And I, I I mean, I would only assume a tamarillo tastes somewhat like a tomato, a sweeter version of a tomato. Well, yeah, because you know, to and me, I get that tomato taste off of it. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, the it doesn't look enough like a tomato for it to be so closely called a tomato. It looked more like a a bloody kiwi. Yeah, like a like I would have seen like a like they call them blood oranges, like like a blood yeah, kiwi or something like that, that, you know. So I mean, there's got to be some tomato taste to it, and they brought up the the taste of tomato several times on the show. So I'm assuming that's what it tastes like. Right. And you said this um, brought out the bitter, right? Mm -hmm. Let's give that a shot. It kind of brings out. I can see the bitter. Um, I I remember them commenting that. The tamarillo kind of added to the hop character, mm -hmm. and I do get a bitterness, but I get more of that tomatoey taste. Yeah, it's it's a much so, more like, like mild taste. bitter to it versus the normal. And New Zealand hops, and I, and I could be wrong on this, but New Zealand hops are, are typically a little bit more mild as well. So you're not going to get the same thing that you would get off of like a Warrior or a you know Magnum hop, on right? The West Coast. The double cream braid to me like. I like double cream brie. I don't like it so much as a pairing um, cheese. And Bill's probably gonna like slap me in the face the next time he sees me. Cause, but to me, like it doesn't have a strong flavor profile at all. And so it, it doesn't. To me, it doesn't really enhance anything. I think it works well with beers that, like maybe a maybe a brown ale. I don't know something that's already kind of mild and earthy. But I foresee an epic master pairings. Where he proves me wrong and makes me yeah. look like a complete idiot, of course. <laughs> Not with epic beer, but an epic an master epic pairings. master pairings. Speaking of master pairings. Oh, yeah, we should, we should probably, probably go to master pairings. Cut off to one right now. Now, before we go off to it, though, we will want to say that we are going to be doing a Porto Murillo master pairings as well. Next However, week. due to scheduling miscommunications, it's not going to be on this episode. <laughs> so, we're going to go to something else. And, uh, I don't know. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to another Master Pairings with me, Bill Sysak, known as Dr. Bill in the beer community. Today I have David from the Crew Brew Crew. Thanks for coming, David. Thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. I see you uh, are a fan of Tuesday Weld. Yep. Oh no, she's an old actress from the 60s. Um, <laughs> Black Tuesday. Ah. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That was just released recently. Unfortunately, I missed the party, but I did get a hold of a shirt. There you go. Great big <clears throat> Imperial Stout. We're not going to have an Imperial Stout today, that being said. Sorry to lead you guys down that road. Uh, today, we're going to have a great German lager from one of my favorite underrated German breweries. This is uh, Weltenberger Kloster Ossenbach. It's one of the few beers 
um, that are made as a Doppelbach in Germany that doesn't end in ATOR. Hmm. Uh, the, the Monks of Paulus originally started out with a beer that was the first Doppelbach, and it was called Pauliner Salvatore. And as a tribute, most German brewers ever since, when they make a Doppelbach, they end with ATOR. Hmm. Beers like Celebrator, Culminator, things like that. So, But this is a Dunkel uh, Doppelbach, so it's a little bit darker. 6.9%, really nice beer, really malty. And today we're going to have some great boneless Korean sh uh, short ribs. And nice. I, th I think you'll really enjoy it. So let's uh, try out these beers and see how they are. Now, since it's a Dunkel Buck, does it, is it supposed to have that banana clove? Uh, it, no, it, it's a Dunkel uh, Doppelbach. Okay. Um, wheat beers usually have clove in them in the banana notes. So you have Dunkel Weisses, yes. which is a dark wheat beer. Um, you can also have Weizenbox, which are wheat Bach beers that are like that, but this is uh, just a, a standard uh, Doppelbach doppel that has a dunkel. So go ahead and pour yourself a little of this beer and let me know what you think. Cheers. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having us. Mm. Residual good. sweetness, nice big roast malt, but as with most Doppelbachs, it has this nice sweetness to it. Now, a lot of uh, people that are getting craft beer ask why we like to pour with head on the beer. Well, the thing is, when you're drinking a macro and you pour and there's head on the beer and you taste it, it tastes like stale beer. When you drink a craft beer or a great beer like this German lager, it's got the flavor of the beer in the foam. Hmm. So the foam will taste along the same lines of the beer. So let's uh, get a couple pieces of this and see what okay. you think. Twist your arm. Yeah. yeah it's alive. Okay. There we go. Go ahead and dig in. See what you think. So these are just like those classic Korean short ribs, but I actually found a place that does them boneless. Nice. So. Makes life a little easier, huh? Mm -hmm. Great marinade. I get the rest, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it plays really well. It subdues the sweetness from the malt, uh, from the beer, but yet it plays well with the caramelization. One of the great things that beer has going for them, other than, um, say, wine or spirits, which I love to pair with food also, is beer has caramelization from the roasted malts, and that plays really well with seared meat and, and roasted meats and things like that because of the caramelization techniques that are picked up. Very good. <clears throat> our, uh, our understudy here has decided to come join us for this particular episode. Um, sir, would you like to come in here? Right here? Come here. Okay. Up. No, no. Up here. I know you're not I'm supposed to come up here, but I'm going to let you. Come here. Oh, oh, sorry. This is your big moment on film. Come here. Up here. What do you think? He yeah. Likes some beer with he likes it. it. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, I just think this goes really well with all kinds of roasted meats. And, uh, of course, this Korean... Uh, rib with the uh, caramelization that's picked up and from the marinade that's got a little sweetness to it anyways yeah a little heat just plays really well with this beer what do you think of the beer i think it's very good i expected more of a uh, more of more of a a sharp and bitter right but instead i'm yeah, you're thinking like more a, roasted malt yeah german lagers are, are different you're you know it's it's not like a porter or a stout where you're going to get up that that really coffee roasted malt the, the malt bill is, is not as dark on this, even though it seems dark. And it's uh, more like a brown ale yeah. where it picks up those characteristics. And, uh, but it's sweet and delicious, and it plays just really well. Um, it's a sweet, dark roast. It's very good. Yeah. No, it's delicious, and I think it goes really well with the pairing. What do you think? Yep, I think it's excellent. All right. Well, cheers. Thanks for coming to another Master Pairings. Boom. So how was that Master Pairings? Yummy! Of course. Yeah. Well, I was speaking about Dr. Bill, but the food was good, too. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> anyway, um, I want to take a minute because it applies. Um, the, the the new show, Brewmasters, it's really cool. It's on Discovery Channel. If you haven't seen it, totally need to check it out because it's totally geared towards you. I mean, if you're watching our show, then this is a show you're totally going to dig and get into. And, right. Um, you know, and, and I think they're playing them on the Discovery website, too, so you don't necessarily have to have... 
You don't have to download it or anything? Yeah, I think they're so. streaming it on there, but... Hmm. Um, you know, I don't know that for sure, but if maybe there'll be a link or something on the show right, right here. Maybe not. Probably not. Knowing Discovery, there's going to be multiple opportunities yeah. to see that show. I love <clears> the <throat> fact that they're taking a leap into craft beer. I love that they're giving it a chance and throwing something out there that's really super niche and is not going to probably appeal to the masses initially. Um, but I think Sam Sam is the perfect person to use for this just because he's got so much charisma and so much character and he's such a goofball that... Like, the, like, you don't necessarily have to love beer to love watching Sam be crazy on TV. And yeah, at the, the show, same time, you get an education about the beer. I mean, at the, Discovery, they make shows, yeah, like American Shopper and, you know, Dirty Jobs and right. things like that. Those jobs are, or not jobs, those shows are about, you know, what they're about. But Mike Rowe has a personality. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Jr. and Sr., they have personalities. Sam Calgione has a personality. Dogfish Head is the perfect brewery, I think, or one of the perfect breweries to do this show because they, they're they fun, they make awesome beers, they're known for their beers in the craft beer community. Right. And it's the well, it's a perfect gateway to someone that doesn't know anything about beer to look at this and go, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, this is what a brewery is like. like. Well, when you think about a show, too. And like, how many people have actually seen a brewery? That's fascinating yeah. in and of itself. Yeah. And as basic as the as the breakdowns are of how they brew the beer and it goes into the mash tun and then it goes into this and goes here and you know, people sit there and they get an elementary schooling on how beer is made. Right. You know. With cool little CGI graphics. And they make I almost make like, it look like this is a lactobacillus strain of bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh cool. Nice. <laughs> I think this beer I, I it has a special place in my heart forever now because you know, I'm friends with Luke, friends with Sam, drank beer with both of these guys. They're both just awesome, awesome guys. And it's been such a pleasure getting to know them and getting to know Agreed. all the different brewers that we've gotten to meet. But I'm honored and humbled and privileged to be a part of this community. And I'm so happy that it's, it's gaining some mainstream success. Agreed. Thank you to the Discovery Channel for that. Dogfish Head, epic. Another amazing beer. Thank you, guys. Seriously, thank you so, so much. Luke, make, thank you, David, for getting this into our hands and I feel, making it available to us. I feel us. lucky and honored to have this beer yeah. in my home. Well, I have to run to the Dunny. So, as always, stay safe and drink beer. Yeah.